Hey, what's up, folks? How we doing? Matt Antonelli here. Today we're talking about the grind of an MLB season and a minor league season. I get asked this question all the time. And, you know, a lot of times I think the thing with baseball is people think, well, it's a non-contact sport. It's not that difficult to play. Like, you shouldn't be tired. You know, people get upset all the time when they hear like, oh, David Ortiz is getting a night off or whoever, Mike Trout's getting a night off. And a lot of fans are like, how is he getting that? What does he need a rest for? Like, you don't do anything in a baseball game. So uh, I know even after I talk about this, people are still going to think that same way. But here's the thing when it comes to a baseball season. And when I'll preface it with this. Before I, got, before I became a minor league player or a major league player, before I was a professional player, I had no idea what a season was like. And everything I thought was wrong. Okay, getting through a minor league season and a minor league season actually, in my opinion, is even a little bit tougher because you get less days off. The travel's tougher. The food is worse. Like a lot of things you get the major league level, you don't get in the minor league level. Um, but even the major league level, like to get through that season is really, really difficult. Like I look at rec like when I look at Cal Ripken's record, I don't. I have no idea how he did that. Like, I don't understand how any human can do that. Like, I had a hard time getting through a month without missing a game. And he, he did it. Like, I don't know how he did it. No clue. And so, again, it's one of those things where if you don't do it, if you're not there every day doing it, I don't think you can really appreciate what it's like and so i'm going to try to do my best in explaining it i know some people are going to still write like you're a pansy it's not that hard and that's fine but let me just let me try to give you some insight okay um first off let's talk about minor league season okay what it's like getting through a minor league season like i said nothing can prepare you like honestly the first my first minor league season, it felt kind of like I was sleepwalking through the whole thing because you're exhausted every day, like physically exhausted, mentally exhausted, any kind of exhausted you can be, that's what you are um, that first season, okay? So let me give you some reasons why. First off, you're playing a ton of games. Typically in the minor leagues, you get like one day off a month, okay? So you're playing every single day and you get lucky if you get one day off, uh, you typically get one day off a month, okay? So just imagine doing anything for eight to 10 hours a day, every single day, except for one day a month. You'd probably get tired of doing, if I sat on the sofa like this and watched television all day long for that amount of time, I'd get tired doing it. I'd probably be mentally exhausted, okay? And we're not talking about a sport. Okay, so that's the first thing. It's just a lot of days in a row, and you're going to do it for a long time. So the season goes from April. Think about doing that April, May, June, July, August, and then playoffs are in September. You get one day off a month. You're going to get like five, six days off during the entire summer. You get a little three-day break in the All-Star break, okay? But you're not getting really any days off, so you're having to do it every single day. That's not counting spring training, where you're going to do it Minor league spring training is only really the month of March. But if you get invited to the big league spring training, you're doing it February and March. Okay, so you're getting two extra months tacked on to that. And then if you're in the minor leagues, you're probably doing an instructional league or you're doing an Arizona fall league after your season's over, which is like another 30, 30 to 40 days of baseball every single day. Okay, so the, the season is incredibly long. It's every single day. And... People call it a grind. I know some people get mad about the word grind. It is a grind, okay? So that's the first thing, the amount of games that you're playing, okay? The second thing is the workday is a lot longer than most people think. Most people think like when I turn the television on and I see the guys out there at 7 o'clock and then they're done at 10 o'clock, like that's the workday. That's not the workday. Like players get to the park. If it's a 7 o'clock game, you're going to get to the park around one-ish, two-ish o'clock, okay? And when you get to the park, we've made a bunch of videos on this already, so go back and check them, but I'll give you a really quick thing of what you're gonna do. You're gonna get to the park, and you're gonna start, you know, you're gonna probably eat some quick lunch, and then you're gonna start getting ready for the day, so you're gonna go through, you're gonna stretch, you're gonna, if you're a hitter, you're gonna hit in the batting cage, 
Then you're going to get ready to go take batting. Or you're going to go out and you know, you're going to stretch in the field. You're going to throw. You're going to do batting practice. You're going to field a bunch of ground balls. You're going to come back in. You're going to get something to eat. You're probably going to go and hit in the cage a few minutes before the game starts. You're going to go back out on the field. You're going to get stretched out again. You're going to throw again. You're going to play a three-hour game. You're going to come in after the game at 10 o'clock, 10.30. A lot of guys are going to get a workout in. You're going to finish your workout in at like 11 o'clock or even later. You got to get dinner. Okay, now you eat dinner. Then you're going to go back to your apartment and it's going to be past midnight. And you're probably going to go to bed, I don't know, around 1 o'clock or so. And then you're going to get up the next morning at say 9 o'clock. You're going to eat breakfast and you're going to basically get ready to go right back to the field. And you're going to do that every single day. So the work day is much longer than a lot of people think. It's not just a three-hour work day. Okay, um, so that's another reason why the season's tough. The next reason is travel. Okay, so just think half the season's on the road. And when you're on the road, if you're someone that hasn't traveled a lot, like again, it's hard to really understand what it is, but let's talk about the low minor leagues. You're going to take bus trips everywhere. So you're going to take, you know, my first, when I first played in short season in the Northwest League, my first trip was like a 10 hour trip to Boise or something like that. So you're on these old crappy buses and you're going to drive, you know, six to eight to 10 hours every four days when you're on the road. So you're going to get on the bus. So this is what happens. Okay. Your game ends. Let's say you're playing at home. Your game ends at 10 o'clock. Okay. Let's say you played a night game. Game ends at 10 o'clock. You're going to eat something, right? You probably, it'll be around 11 o'clock after you get showered and everything. You're going to get in the bus. You're going to drive all through the night which some guys can sleep, but sometimes it's really difficult to sleep on a crappy old bus when the AC breaks and you're sweating. And you got a guy sitting right up on next to you like this. You're crammed up and the TV's blaring and people are yelling in the back. And you're bumping like that all the way down the road for eight hours. Sometimes it's tough to sleep. So you're going to do that all the way through. You're going to get in at, say, like 7 a.m. the next day. You get in, hopefully you can get into the hotel, you check in by like seven, eight o'clock. You try to get a couple hours of sleep if you weren't really able to sleep during the bus. Most guys are not able to sleep on the bus. And so you get a couple hours sleep. Let's say you sleep for four or five hours and you gotta get up and you gotta go to the field because you gotta get ready for that game. And now you're gonna play four games in a row and then you're gonna have to get back on a bus and you're gonna have to either drive back to to our, your home stadium, eight hours away, you're going to go to another stadium, okay? So you're going to drive another six hours or so, and then you're going to do the same thing again for four days, and then you're going to drive home, and you're going to get home, and you're going to do the same thing for, you know, you probably play an eight-game homestand or so, then you're going to get back on the bus, and you're going to drive again. And so it happens every single day, and you don't get any days off. So after a while, you play exhausted. It's hard to catch up on sleep a lot of times. It's hard to get your body back to feeling good because it's just, you feel like crap every single day. But like, honestly, the only way I can really describe it is it's like kind of playing like sleepwalking. Like that's what you feel like after a while. So that's the other tough part is the travel is super tough. Not to mention when your bus breaks down, our bus broke down on our way home from Vancouver and we could, we, we, sat on the side of the road for like six hours and then we finished our trip. So that stuff happens. You're staying in hotels all the time, right? So you're always bouncing from hotel to hotel to hotel all the time. Okay. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. Your eating schedule is kind of messed up. Eat a lot of fast food. A lot of times you're eating, it's like the bus pulls over on the side of the road and you have McDonald's, Arby's, Taco Bell. And so you're eating a lot of crap in the clubhouse and the low miners. You get Poor food. You get peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, really. That's all you can really eat. Or ramen noodles, okay? And so you're you're not eating the best, right? So all these things start to add up on you. And when you get beat up, like, again, people think that baseball is a non-contact sport. But the problem is there's no time to rest. Because when you're playing every day, obviously you're going to start to get a little bit sore, right? Because you may think, again, that's not a lot. But you're taking hundreds of swings a day. You're throwing hundreds of balls a day. You're running. You're diving. You're doing all these things. If you happen to get a little bit of a tweak or hurt something, it's hard to get any rest. You got to play through it. And after a while, things start to kind of build up on you and your body just really starts to hurt really bad. You get used to playing sore a lot, right? And then if you get injured, it's really difficult. Then you'll end up getting some days off, but it's tough to really get fully healthy. You're always kind of, you're never playing a hundred percent, right? Like the only day you're a hundred percent is like the first day of spring training. And then after that, you're never a hundred percent again. Okay. So just some more reasons why 
it's really, really difficult to do. And again, you're doing this for like eight months in a row every single day. And now that I don't play baseball, I literally, like, when it's like, so the baseball season is going to start soon. And everyone gets excited and you watch it, okay? And you, for me, I watch a ton of baseball early. And then, like, obviously, I have a ton of stuff going on. So you slowly start to watch a little bit less. And I try to watch as much as I can. But when it gets to, like, June and July, all the time now that I don't play, I always go, oh, my God, they're still playing baseball. Like, it brings me back to, like, the season. Like, how are they still playing? And then you get to, like, August and September. And you're like, like, what? I don't understand. How are they still playing? Like, this is the longest season of all time. It just goes on forever. So, really, really difficult. When you get in the major leagues, a couple things that help you a little bit. Again, I didn't spend a ton of time in the major leagues. But, for one, you get a few more off days. So, the schedule is a little bit longer. So, now you get that extra month. So, in the minor leagues, you're trying to cram the whole season until, like, one last month. In the major leagues, you play in September. Okay. So you get a few more off days. The travel is better. So you're not going to take buses everywhere. You're going to fly everywhere. And the difference with travel on the plane, in the minor leagues, the only time I started to fly was in AAA in the Pacific Coast League. And the tough part about travel in the minor leagues on the plane is that you never get direct flights and you always have like 6 a.m. flights. So you get it done with a game at 11, like I said, you eat dinner, you get in bed, you finally fall asleep at like 1 or 2. You got to wake up at 4 because you got to get to the stadium. Say you got a 6 a.m. flight, you got to get to the stadium by like 4.30. Everyone gets on the bus, you drive to the airport. You got to be at the airport at least an hour before the flight because you got to check the whole team in. So you get like three hours of sleep. And then you fly, typically for us, we'd always fly to like Vegas, get off the plane in Vegas, get on a new plane, and then fly the rest of the way. And then you finally end up in like Omaha or New Orleans or some Memphis or some wacky place all over the country. And then you get off the plane, you go check in the hotel, you go down to the field and you play on like two, three hours of sleep after being on a plane all the way across the country. And again, in four days, you're flying someplace else and then you're flying someplace else. And so that league was actually for me the worst league because you're just you're getting up super early and you're flying everywhere. It takes a lot out a lot out of you. In the major leagues, the best thing about the major leagues and flights is that when the game ends, so let's say we're playing, right? We're playing the game and we got to fly someplace, okay? We're playing in San Diego and the game ends. Let's say it's sometimes you get day, you get getaway days where you play early and that makes it easier. But let's say it's a night game. Game ends at 10. You eat, shower up, get on the bus. You drive right to the airport. They pull you up right to the runway. You get off the bus and the plane's right there. You don't go through security or anything. You go to this, they have like a table set up. You walk up to the table. You let them see your bag. They look in it real quick. They say, thank you very much. You go up on the plane. You get in the plane. The plane's basically like a uh, first class seat. You sit on the plane. The plane takes off in 10 minutes. You land someplace. You get off the plane. The bus is sitting right there for you. You get off. You're on the runway. You get on the bus. You go to the hotel. So it's way, way better than minor league travel. There's no security. There's no commercial flights. You're not getting up early in the morning. You're flying right after the game real quick. And then you can get into the stadium early. You know, you may get in at like 2 a.m., but now you can go to sleep at 2 or 3, say 3 o'clock, and at least you can sleep till noon, and then you can get up and go to the field. So travel helps a little bit there. The other thing in the major leagues, you get better food, right? So you're going to eat much better food. You get paid way more money, so then you can actually do stuff. Like you can eat healthier. You're not eating McDonald's every single day, right? You're getting a lot of mail money on the road in the major leagues. I got $100 a day. It's probably more than that now. I haven't played in a major league. I haven't been in the major leagues in eight years. And so you get paid probably a lot more money now. Um, you also have people that can take care of you better. So you, you have masseuse. You can get a massage. You have masseuses or I don't even know if that's the right word. You can get massages. Um, you can get, you have a chiropractor. You can get all this stuff to help your body. Okay. Um, so that really helps out. The hotels that you're staying at are much nicer hotels. You don't have a roommate. In the minor leagues, you have a roommate. So you got a guy that snores on the road all the time and you're throwing pillows at him to wake him up because he can't sleep or you're trying to cover your head like this. And so you might not get as good a sleep on the road in the minors. In the majors, you get your own hotel room, right? You're at like a beautiful hotel. Um, and so it's just, you get b better rest, right? The bed is more comfortable. You get more pillows, like all that good stuff, okay? Um, so that really helps out. 
So all those things kind of help out in the major leagues, but don't let it fool you to think like, oh, like, you know, like um, in the movie Major League when she, when, what's her face? I forget her name, but she says like, we're pampering these guys too much. Like that is not the case in the major leagues. Like, yeah, they get paid tons of money and they do travel nicely and they have nice hotels, but don't let that fool you to think that like, it's not a hard season. Like it's a hard season. <laughs> it is a grind and your body gets beat up no matter how well you take care of it or how much money you have or whatever like it's a really really tough season so hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of insight in what a season is like and i know some people are going to still say like suck it up you guys are a bunch of babies like that's okay i'm just trying to tell you the truth because i thought that when i was younger and when you get into it you're like wow this is like nothing i ever expected and now that i'm out of it like in some ways of traveling on stuff like it's so much easier just sitting here on the sofa like this talking into a, a camera so uh, let me know if you have any questions, any more questions. I'll, I'll help you guys out and answer as many as I can. Uh, share the video with all your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Give us a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Um, check out the description box below. I've got a bunch of stuff there for you guys to check out. And that's all I got. Thank you again for watching. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you later.